Hi, I'm Scott Fudenberg. I'm a glaucoma specialist uh, here at Will's Eye. And first of all, I want to say thank you to all of the people whose hard work makes the CARES Conference possible. It's one of my favorite events of the year. It's such a unique opportunity for us as doctors to spend extra time communicating about glaucoma uh, with the people that matter most. And so I'm really grateful for everyone uh, who has worked to produce this event, but I'm also very sorry that I can't be with you in person as I'll be out of the country when the CARES Conference takes place. So instead, uh, we've recorded a talk here and I want to talk to you today about trabeculectomy. So first of all, what is trabeculectomy? Trabeculectomy is a type of glaucoma surgery. It's a glaucoma surgery with a long history of success. We have been performing trabeculectomy surgery since the 1960s. But over the course of that time, as you might imagine, many modifications to the procedure have been introduced that have improved its success rate and decreased its complication rate. There are many surgical options for glaucoma, and it's important to keep in perspective that we treat glaucoma with medicines, lasers, and surgery, and surgery is almost always the last resort. Trabeculectomy has historically been the first-line treatment for, for glaucoma when it comes to surgery, meaning it's usually the surgery that patients have first. That doesn't mean it has to be the surgery that you have first, but usually it's the first-line treatment. The purpose of trabeculectomy is to lower the intraocular pressure. And the reason we want to lower the intraocular pressure is to prevent further damage to the optic nerve from glaucoma. The purpose of the surgery is to prevent vision loss, but the, but the surgery is vision saving, it's not vision improving. So a typical trabeculectomy surgery will not improve the vision, but will help you save your vision. It's important to understand also that glaucoma surgery in general and all of our treatments are not a cure for glaucoma. Just because you take a medicine, have a laser, or ultimately even might have a surgery, that doesn't mean that the journey is over in terms of glaucoma. It's important that even after an intervention uh, that you continue to seek follow-up care and that your glaucoma is monitored throughout your life. It's also important to understand that even after having glaucoma surgery, many patients still require medications in order to treat their glaucoma at some point. So the surgery itself is not guaranteed to be a substitute for the medications. In order to understand trabeculectomy better and understand how it works, I think first you have to understand how glaucoma works. So I want to show you some videos to help emphasize what we understand about the way that glaucoma works. The eye is an enclosed space with both a pump and a drain. The pump makes fluid and that fluid travels through your pupil, a hole in the center of the iris, the colored part of the eye, into the front part of the eye. And it cascades down the inside of the cornea, the clear dome in the front of the eye, towards the drains, which are located at an angle made between the cornea, the clear dome in the eye, and the iris, the colored part of the eye. So if we take a little closer look at that section of the eye, you can see that the drains in the eye are really a living network of tissue. They are not just a pipe. And that fluid travels through that living network of tissue and then ultimately enters, uh, re-enters your bloodstream. And that's how the eye drains fluid. The problem in glaucoma is that not enough fluid is being drained. The problem isn't that the eye is making too much fluid, it's that not enough fluid can escape. You can think of that a little like a sink backing up, where the fluid is flowing in, but if there is an obstruction, then the fluid backs up. In the eye, if the drainage apparatus is not working as well as we want it to, then the intraocular pressure may go up because not enough fluid can escape. When the intraocular pressure is too high for a certain eye, that ultimately causes damage to the optic nerve, the cable that connects the eye with the brain from the back of the eye and that carries the visual information. When that damage occurs, the tissue that makes up the optic nerve is lost, and if enough of that damage occurs, it can result in limitation of the peripheral vision and ultimately in vision loss. So how do we treat that situation with surgery? 
A trabeculectomy is performed in order to create an accessory drainage pathway to bypass the native drains with which you were born in order to help the fluid drain, re-enter your bloodstream, and keep the pressure low. What we do is make a flap in the white wall of the eye, which we call the sclera, with a hole underneath. You can think of it a little like a trap door for the fluid to trickle through the eye wall. We typically sew that flap partially closed because just like we don't want the pressure to be too high, we don't want the pressure to be too low either. And those sutures we use, or stitches that we use, to sew the flap can be manipulated in the office, uh, sometimes at the microscope and sometimes with lasers. The fluid drains through the trap door in the white wall of the eye and it collects underneath the thin clear skin that overlies the white part of your eye called the conjunctiva. And that forms a fluid, fluid pocket, which we term a bleb. It's like a fluid blister. So the fluid collects there before it ultimately diffuses through blood vessels on the outside of the eye into the bloodstream. This video shows what the trabeculectomy procedure is like. So we make an incision in the conjunctiva, the thin clear skin that overlies the white wall of the eye, and then ultimately create the flap or trap door in the, in the white wall of the eye in order for the fluid to trickle through. And there, thereby the fluid that's made inside the eye can start to escape and collect as a fluid pocket, which you see in the video forming right here underneath the conjunctiva, the thin clear skin that overlies the white part of the eye. So I want to show you a picture about what an actual trabeculectomy, uh, how an actual trabeculectomy looks. But I also want to warn you if seeing pictures of the eye up close is something that might make you uncomfortable, now is the time not to look. So this is a picture of a patient who has had a trabeculectomy. And you can start to see here, this is the thin clear skin that overlies the white part of the eye. And right here is the flap that's been made, the trap door in the sclera, the white wall of the eye. And this is another picture meant to emphasize not only the fluid pocket that's formed here after this trabeculectomy, but also these little black lines, which are the stitches we use in order to sew that conjunctiva watertight during the surgery. And just a point about the stitches that are used, uh, I think people often express surprise that we're able to use stitches on the eyeball itself. The stitches that we use are about 20 microns in width. That means uh, about 20 millionths of a meter in width. And you can get a sense for just how small those really are in that the thickness of a paper, a piece of paper, is about 70 to 180 microns. So uh, many orders of magnitude greater than the, than the width of the stitch that we use in the surgery. In fact, the stitch that we use in surgery can be about the size or far smaller than the size of a human hair. And a coat of paint, for more perspective, is about 100 microns, so five times bigger than the width of the stitch we use in the surgery. I want to tell you a little bit about what you might expect if you were to need to have trabeculectomy surgery, but I want to emphasize that every person's experience is different, every surgery is a little bit different. These are rough guidelines about what it might be like after having a surgery, but by no means are these absolutes. So typically, the procedure is done in an outpatient setting, meaning that you come in but you leave the same day, though it can also be done in a hospital. Most of the time, the surgery takes less than an hour to perform, but it's important to remember that each surgery takes as much time as it needs, and there's more to it than just surgery, getting everything set up, getting you feeling comfortable um, before the actual operating time. Typically, we can do trabeculectomy surgery with what we call twilight anesthesia, which means we don't need to put you completely to sleep, and you don't need a tube down your throat in order to help you breathe, but we can keep you completely comfortable and relaxed during the procedure. Afterwards, discomfort is mild and typically treated by a medicine like Tylenol. What may be more prominent is the feeling of irritation or foreign body sensation, like there's something in your eye, and that feeling gets better day by day after the surgery takes place. It's typical also to expect some redness, irritation, and blurry vision after the surgery, and the vision may be blurry for a variable period of time. But often after the surgery, a person's glasses prescription might change, and that change in prescription may not be stable until six to eight weeks after the surgery. 
It's also common to expect that the intraocular pressure will fluctuate, sometimes widely. It may be a roller coaster ride in terms of your pressure after the surgery. And we expect to see you frequently after the surgery in order to help manipulate the surgery to keep it working well. And I want to leave you with one final thought. And, and I apologize that I'm not available in person to answer questions about trabeculectomy. But instead, I just want to mention that sometimes when you learn about medical issues, it, it, that can be a challenge. Um, and communicating about them can be a challenge for your doctors as well. And so it's critical to remember that when you read something about a medical problem, including glaucoma, or you watch something on TV, or you find something on the internet about medical issues, those may be a good way to stimulate questions, but not always a great way to answer questions. And it's really important that you communicate your fears, concerns, and questions with your eye care provider so that they may give you the specific information that's relevant to your case. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be here in spirit, even if not in person.